How's everyone doing? Today I have seven horror Blu-rays right here, and they're all from Echo Bridge Home Entertainment, and if you've seen these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And first up is the Prophecy Collection right here, four film set. It doesn't include Prophecy 2, it includes The Prophecy, Prophecy 3, The Ascent, Prophecy 4, Uprising, and Prophecy 5, Forsaken. I don't know if there's a licensing issue with Prophecy 2, but I do believe that Echo Bridge Home Entertainment is going to release a five film set for the Prophecy Collection, and so I'm looking forward to checking that one out. And here you go, they're all on one disc right there, all four films right there. And one thing I like about Echo Bridge Home Entertainment, uh, a lot of their titles, you know, they're, they're decently priced, they're reasonably priced, so you can pick up a lot of these Blu-rays for a good price. And again, you know, four films from the Prophecy Collection at a good price, you can't really beat that. Uh, the first one is by far the best. Uh, the first three star Christopher Walken. Uh, the fourth one has uh, Doug Bradley in it as well. Uh, the first one, though, had an amazing cast. You have Elias Kotis, uh, you've got uh, Viggo Mortensen, Virginia Madsen, of course, Christopher Walken. Uh, you've got a few other well-known faces in some of the sequels as well. Uh, again, Prophecy Prophecy 4 has uh, Doug Bradley. Prophecy 5 has uh, Jason Scott Lee, uh, Jason London, and Tony Todd is in here as well. Candyman. He's always going to be Candyman to me. But a uh, nice set. All four films right here uh, on uh, the one disc. But I will be looking forward to the uh, release of the, the complete collection, uh, the fifth film in here, uh, Prophecy 2. And next up is a double feature right here, Venom and the Hole. Uh, and I've talked about Venom before. Uh, Venom has a kind of a, you know, a southern voodoo kind of vibe going on. Uh, one of their friends pass away, and a group of teenagers, they go down to uh, the bayou, the swamps of Louisiana. And there's, again, there's the voodoo aspect, and then there's this crazy, creepy character. I think his name is Mr. Jangles. And he's, you know, basically attacking the kids, and they hide in this house, and, you know, they just basically have to fight to survive. And I believe Mr. Jangles is like possessed by these spirits, and uh, it stars uh, Bijou Phillips, uh, Jonathan Jackson, uh, Method Man is in here as well, uh, a few other recognizable faces. Uh, but it's you know basically a, a young teenage kind of cast, you know, trying to basically fight off this you know evil creature, Mr. Jangles, who's possessed by these spirits. It's decently entertaining. I remember watching this for the first time on the Sci-Fi Channel late at night, and I thought it was uh, some good atmosphere, some decent effective scares in there. Uh, overall, it's it's about an average film, but definitely worth checking out, I'd say. And then the whole right here starring Thor Birch and Kira Knightley. I'll have to be honest, I was kind of disappointed in this one. It's kind of a psychological horror film, and it's basically about a group of friends that go in this old like kind of bomb shelter, and they, they seal up the shelter, and then three of those friends end up dying, and two people end up surviving, and they're basically trying to find out what happened and who killed them and, you know, things like that. And it's, it's a psychological horror film, and Thora Birch, she reminds me of this girl who I used to hook up with not that long ago. She kind of looks like her in this film. I'm like, ugh... Bad memories, bad memories, you're crazy, just like that girl. Uh, but, you know, some recognizable faces in here. Kira Knightley, I feel like she was too good for this movie, in my opinion. Uh, it was average at best, if that. It's not one I could really recommend. I mean, you have some isolation and, some, you know, you see people just acting crazy and... Uh, wasn't a big fan of it, kind of disappointed. It was kind of predictable. Uh, wasn't anything too special, in my opinion. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. Maybe I'm being too critical because I've heard a lot of good things about it and I just definitely didn't think it was that great at all. But next up is Hellraiser Hellworld. I love the heck out of this movie. And this is the eighth Hellraiser movie. It was a straight to DVD one. It was shot right after Deader. And it stars Lance Henriksen. It's basically about a group of friends that are into this uh, computer game called Hellworld. And they're invited to this party uh, from Hellworld. It's supposed to be kind of like a Hellworld party. And one of the friends that was really into it ends up dying. And they find out uh, there's a twist of why they're invited. And Lance Henriksen plays a big part in that. And it's really got some good effects. It's got some creepiness to it. And I actually really enjoyed this one. Uh, way better than I was expecting. Now this was originally adapted from a story that wasn't related to the uh, Hellraiser franchise, but it, they made it, you know, mixed in together, it made it work, and again, you know, you've got Penhead right there on the front, uh, Evil Goes Online, really enjoy this one. Uh, besides the first two, this is definitely my next favorite of the series, and uh, I think if you like the Hellraiser movies, I think you should check this one out. I feel like it kind of has a feel like a kind of 90s horror with Scream and uh, Urban Legend and I Know What You Did Last Summer and all those kinds of ones. But I think this one, I actually enjoy this one more than those films. I was never a big fan of those kinds of 90s horror films. Uh, but this one kind of has that same similar feel to it, but better in my opinion. With some really cool visuals, especially in the beginning where they're going down in the basement. They see all these creepy things, you know, like babies in jars and kind of creepy operation things and stuff like that this old creepy house and Lance Henriksen is showing them around and they're having these crazy visions and basically they have to fight to survive because all these crazy things start happening people start dying 
Now, it was actually made in 2005, so it wasn't made in the 90s. It just has that 90s horror feel that kind of glitzy, glamorized the, you know, teenage cast and stuff like that. Uh, again, Lance Henriksen, you know, always good to see him in uh, horror movies, and he did a good job in here as well. Very happy to have this one, and I definitely say check this one out. And next up is I Am Omega. This is basically a, you know, same kind of thing as uh, Omega Man, I Am Legend, Last Man on Earth, same kind of thing. And it stars Mark DeCascos, who's been in tons of, like, martial arts action movies right there. Uh, he was actually in the French film uh, The Brotherhood of the Wolf with uh, Vincent Castle. Really great film. Very underrated in my opinion. Brotherhood of the Wolf. Highly recommend checking that one out. Uh, but I Am Omega is basically like all those other uh, ones from Richard, Richard Matheson's uh, I Am Legend uh, novel. Uh, but basically this one is just low budget. It's an asylum film. So if you've seen asylum films you know what to expect. Very low budget. Very cheap visual effects. But I love this kind of storyline with you know being the last man on Earth. The plague basically wipes out people People, and there's all these kind of infected people attacking people uh, very similar to like the zombie genre except they're they're not really zombies they're infected uh, but basically he has to fight to survive and he thinks he's the last man on earth but he meets somebody else and blah 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 if you've seen I Am Legend, Omega Man, Last Man on Earth uh, you, with Vincent Price you kind of know what to expect with this kind of movie it's basically all those movies but Actually, you know what? I Am Legend had the best visual effects. It was the best out of all those kinds of ones. Uh, Omega Man is, you know, I've watched that movie several times. In that time, it might have been groundbreaking, but nowadays it's just, you look back, it's kind of campy and cheesy. And Charlton Heston, he's overacting. And uh, Vincent Price, you know, that movie, Last Man on Earth, uh, you know, Vincent Price, he's always enjoyable to watch, but that one was just so slow-paced. The infected people weren't really scary or threatening he just kind of walks past them so that one didn't really live up to any kind of tension or hype i am legend though, i thought that was the best adapted movie from richard matheson's novel uh this one again it's low budget same kind of a deal um but still decent watch i like that kind of storyline the sci-fi horror elements next up is salvage right here and uh basically i've seen this kind of theme so many times before where you know somebody's being attacked and they they wake up from this dream and they keep envisioning these things and things start happening. They end up getting killed again. It kind of continues and continues and there's a twist, but it's not that much of a twist surprise. You kind of know a certain thing that's going to happen, uh, but there's a little bit of a twist. You're like, oh, all right. They, they took it up for a slightly different angle, but still it doesn't save the movie. Uh, the acting isn't great at all. The lead actress uh, wasn't a big fan of the lead actress right here. Um, she works at this like 7-Eleven kind of convenience store. Every time she gets killed, she wakes up in that same kind of spot where she's waking up and she has to clock out and there's a killer and she has to survive this killer because the killer keeps attacking and killing. And it's this kind of uh, fuses tongue-in-cheek black comedy with a horrifying new nightmare like a bad acid trip in hell. Uh, it doesn't, not too much tongue-in-cheek black comedy really in here. I don't, uh, maybe a little bit, but not enough to put it as a big excerpt right there. Um, it's okay. It's it's about average, uh, brutal. I don't, it's not really brutal. There's a couple, you know, gore scenes, but not much really at all. Uh, not too much gore at all, really. I mean, it's more of a psychological horror film. That's what it comes down to. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, it's basically about a, a woman who keeps having the same nightmare, being killed, and it, there's a twist, and it's kind of predictable, but it's slightly off center. Average at best. And next up is from Dusk Till Dawn 3, The Hangman's Daughter. Really enjoyed this one. I think I might do a whole separate review for this one. Uh, from Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez. It stars Rebecca Gayhart right there. She did the Noxzema commercials all the time. She was in 90210. Uh, it stars Michael Parks, who is uh, the preacher in Red State. Oh, he was so amazing in Red State. He deserved an Oscar nomination for that role. And Danny Trejo's in here as well. I uh, really enjoyed this one. Again, it's basically a prequel from the original from Dusk Till Dawn. Uh, it shows uh, the Titty Twister bar right there, what it was before. And uh, basically, it's a horror western, a vampire western. And it starts off with this guy's getting ready to get hanged, and people shoot the people getting ready to hang him, and he ends up getting free. And they're all traveling, and the people that were going to hang him, they end up following him. And uh, the hangman's daughter is her right there. And it all revolves around her because. I don't want to give too much away with her, who she is, uh, but it's it's really uh, pivotal for the whole aspect of going back to the Teddy Twister bar. And Danny Trehart plays the bartender there, and of course, uh, if you've seen the first from Dusk Till Dawn movie, you know all about Danny Trejo and the bar and things like that. And Rebecca Gayhart, she plays like a religious woman. Or she was just newly married, and her husband... Uh, there's so much I want to say about this movie, but I don't want to give him much away. 
I definitely think this one's worth checking out. If you like uh, the original uh, from Dusk Till Dawn, I think you'll really enjoy uh, Hangman's Daughter. Uh, definitely better than uh, from Dusk Till Dawn 2. There's, there's one part where I was kind of like, I want a little bit more from it, and then the ending as well, kind of want a little bit more. Uh, but there's actually another part after the ending that kind of fits it very well. And this guy right here, who is kind of the lead, essentially, one of the two leads, uh, he was kind of a, a, a jerk, essentially. You you can't really feel emotions for him or feel bad for him because he does something, he kills people, and he just does it in such a just really kind of heartless way. And you're like, you can't really like that character at all, but it feels like you should like the character. Uh, and you just don't really care about the character. I was hoping he would get killed personally because he was just such a douche. Uh, but really enjoyable film. Michael Parks, again, really enjoy his character. Uh, great to see Danny Trejo in movies. And again, Rebecca Gayhart. <laughs> you know, I always picture her in the Noxzema 90210 and... I don't know, I really enjoy that. And there's another character here. I almost felt like that character was unnecessary. There's like a young girl who's kind of a gunslinger and killer, and she like looks up to this guy. I feel like her character was unnecessary, and I kind of wanted a revenge kind of thing from her aspect. But again, like I said, if you like the first From Dust Till Dawn movie, I think you'll really enjoy this one. And I say it's worth checking out for a kind of a horror western movie, vampire western. Again, it's low budget, but very decent. And next up is Children of the Corn 3, Urban Harvest. Now, I love the heck out of this up until the ending. Uh, again, another thing, too, it felt like, you know, you know the whole Children of the Corn aspect, you know, crazy killer kids, and uh, there's possession kind of stuff going on, and who's the little kid? The little kid's evil. The little kid's could be the devil, blah, blah, blah. And they're killing off the parents and stuff like that, and that's the whole thing. They're, they want to kill off the parents, but there wasn't a ton of parent killing in this. Like, it was all building up to it, and then just kind of bloop kind of fell off. It was like, really? I was expecting like an all-out rampage killing parents. It doesn't really happen. And there's some actually really good gore effects, especially towards the end of the movie. But then at the end of the movie, it just went over the top. It, it jumped the shark at the end of this movie. I was like, really? You just, everything was going great. And then just you, this big, ah, it almost turns into a creature feature at the end. I'm like, it just felt like it was really unnecessary. And these two young boys, uh, Eli and Joshua, they're adopted by the family, the Porter family. And uh, soon after they're adopted, strange things start happening and people start end up getting killed. And you, you find out one of them is crazy and evil and wants to kill a bunch of parents. He has all these different like creepy powers where he can control other kids. He puts like these little uh, pieces of the corn that turn into the bugs into the food and the kids are controlled by him. And then... Um, he attacks different parents and stuff like that. There's a couple parents that are end up killed in here, but not many. I was expecting like an all-out parent-killing rampage, and that wasn't the case. And there he is right there. And the kid right there who played Eli, he was actually really creepy looking. So that fit the bill. Uh, a very good creepy evil killer kid movie. And really this is a, a fun, cheesy horror movie. It's one of those horror movies where you just put on with your friends and have a few beers and just relax to and enjoy. I feel like kind of way about a, a few of these movies from uh, Echo Bridge Home Entertainment, I Am Omega, Hell, uh, Hell World, uh, from Dust Till Dawn 3 even. All those ones are kind of ones where it's kind of, you know, cheesy, entertaining horror movies. And this one is definitely the epitome of that. Some really good gore effects towards the end. And the end, uh, just what the ending which could have been a little bit better and just kind of like I said it went a little too far at the end but still very enjoyable and I really like this one and if you like the Children of the Corn uh, kind of evil kid kind of vibe I think you'll enjoy this one definitely one of the better uh, sequels Urban Harvest right here so there you go. There are my seven horror Blu-ray pickups. If you've seen these movies definitely let me know what you think of them. Leave me a comment or video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care.